El relator especial de las Naciones Unidas sobre el Derecho a la Libertad de Reunión Pacífica y de Asociación Clemán de Aletosí Boulé estuvo en Costa Rica la semana pasada durante una visita académica. Conversamos con él acerca de la situación en Nicaragua, una que caracteriza como sin precedentes a nivel mundial, con un total de más de 1.800 organizaciones sin fines de lucro canceladas por el régimen Ortega Murillo. Veamos lo que nos dijo sobre el impacto del cierre de los espacios cívicos y la violación de las libertades civiles en el país. Gracias, relator, por esta entrevista. Thank you. En julio pasado, usted y otros relatores expertos de la ONU firmaron una carta dirigida al gobierno nicaragüense expresando su preocupación por la cancelación de las organizaciones de sociedad civil. ¿Han recibido alguna respuesta? No, we haven't received any response. Uh, and uh, we are still waiting and we hope that we'll receive response from the states. ¿Cuál era la intención al enviar esta carta? Well, this letter I intend to really raise our concern uh, regarding the ongoing shutdown of organization, but also to reiterate again the concern we raised in 2020 regarding the adoption of foreign agent law, which, which put together with the new law is really um, having impacts on the civic space on the ground. And we also mention in this letter uh, issues that we think should be um, considered by the country in order to protect the civic space. Because as you know, we have been engaging with the country since 2018, raising our concern regarding the shutdown of the political space and civic space in general, but also the tension of the uh, political leaders. And these two laws just come to really put the country in a situation where there is no more civic space, there is no more space for the political activity, for civil society to operate peacefully. El gobierno en Nicaragua ha cerrado ya más de 1.600 organizaciones sin fines de lucro. ¿Qué impacto tiene en una sociedad la desaparición de estas organizaciones que se dedicaban a temas de salud, de educación, cultura, a asistencia humanitaria? I think I think you you mentioned it clearly. Uh, the impact is huge. Let me reiterate again here that the civil society is an essential component of the society. And the work done by civil society is needed, is important for victim, for vulnerable group, for marginalized group. And we always say that there is no state in this world then that can overcome inequality and justice in the country without the participation of the civil society. And by shutting down this 1600 NGO, the country is exposing himself or is preventing himself to achieve the sustainable goal 2020 agenda because this sustainable uh, goal this 2020 agenda make it clear that we need to ensure that no one is left behind and civil society work is essential to overcome some of this challenge to ensure that women that are marginalized can be can receive remedies to ensure also that uh, the indigenous people that find that their rights are violated, have remedies or have access to justice to ensure that also the vulnerable group or the community that are marginalized where there is no possibility of education can receive also support from the civil society. The work of civil society is essential. And when those civil society is shut down, it's not only the impact is not only felt on the civil society, but in the whole society. We will see the increase of injustice increase of marginalization, increase of inequality, but also the increase of stigmatization within the society. ¿Cómo califica usted la situación de Nicaragua en el contexto de América Latina y del de mundo? I think um, the ongoing situation in Nicaragua is um, a very concerning situation. And uh, I would not say that uh, it's exceptional, but uh, it, reach the level where it become one of the most critical issue of the civic space in a, in a country, or at least in many countries that I visited until now. We have been concerned in many countries about the 
the restrictive space of the civil society, the issue of the registration, the issue of the repression. But it's really the first time that I'm seeing really in a few years so many NGO being shut down. Minjo that was there for many years operating legally, helping society, one day just be shut down only because they become illegal because of two laws. And I think this is really concerning. It's the first time that I'm seeing that in the whole world. I have, like I mentioned, I have a concern with many countries in relation to the civic space, but it's the first time really that I can count this number of the NGO just because of the consequences of this law. These two laws. En abril de 2018 que usted inició su mandato fue cuando estalló la crisis en Nicaragua, cuando el gobierno reprimió las masivas protestas e impuso un estado policial de facto. Han pasado ya cuatro años. ¿Es posible mantener un estado policial que impide todo tipo de reunión y de asociación pacífica a lo largo del tiempo y de manera permanente? Bueno, well, desde four years, um, I have been uh, engaging with the country to raise some of the concerns, not only in terms of shutdown of civil space, but also uh, in terms of so repression of the peaceful protests. And I think at some time we were, we were hoping that the peace negotiation that started in the country will lead with something that can help to really relieve society and move forward in setting up democratic country, inclusive country and peaceful country. But unfortunately, this negotiation didn't uh, go forward. And I think it, 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 it's just, I, I'm not seeing the way for a country to sustain in using this practice now, in completely pushing his citizen to the exile, putting his brain to leave the country, and also leaving so many communities without any support anymore. And I'm not, saying, I'm not seeing this to be sustainable. And that's why it's important to continue to emphasize that the Nicaraguan government need to open the country to the international scrutiny. Nicaragua is part of the international community. And they are bound by some principle. And they should not refuse international scrutiny. They should open their border to the High Commissioner, to the OSHA, to the Special Rapporteur, to the Inter-American Commission. We are there to help this country to move forward to, and to overcome its challenges. And Nicaragua should not be the exception. ¿Y cuál es el impacto de este desplazamiento forzoso masivo de nicaragüenses hacia Costa Rica, Estados Unidos y otros destinos? Well, this is unfortunate, and uh, we, 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 we keep reiterating that, uh, that uh, this is completely the violation of the fundamental freedom of migrants. And we should be stopping that. And that's why it's important, I'm calling also other countries, other states also, to also ensure that such practice is pushed back. And then also, we know it's not only, we, we, we have also uh, many issues that from Nicaraguan also crossing uh, through uh, Costa Rica here and going to it. And I think we, we need also to understand the reason why people are leaving the country. And also to understand that the restriction of civic space also have an impact on other countries because other countries also need to face migrants. They need also to face these challenges. They need also to overcome these challenges. This is why it's important for all of the country. And you ask me recently what, how I see in the region. This is also one of the challenges because we are also seeing that because of restricted space, because of this increase, restriction that we are seeing in the region, we are also seeing many migrants moving from the country that become authoritarian country to the country that we, uh, they steal freedom for people to express themselves. And this is also posing a lot of challenge in terms of migration. This is why the international community needs to react quickly. How can societies recover the liberty of association and reunion pacific that has been coerced by governments authoritarian? Well, how society should recover, I think uh, is the responsibility of any country to protect and to ensure that his citizens exercise the legitimate right that they own and that was ratified by their country. It is the responsibility of Nicaragua first 
to set up in at the national level the environment which allows people to exercise these rights. And because if this is not done today, it is also the responsibility of the international mechanism to ensure that Nicaraguans have access to remedies at the international level, at the regional level, and also international courts. When the avenue for people to exercise their rights, the avenue for people to exercise, the, the, to exercise justice, because this is the reality. The justice is becoming a tool in the hand of the government to repress, but also to condemn political leader. When people don't have this access, people need to turn to the international system. They need also to turn to the international court to ensure that their rights is respected. La escalada represiva ha aumentado en Nicaragua y ahora hay sacerdotes detenidos y templos católicos asediados por la policía y por simpatizantes del gobierno. ¿Qué le diría usted desde su relatoría a las autoridades en Nicaragua? Uh, we already, we, we, I think we, we mentioned that and I think this is, the, um, the recent situation is also another indication of uh, the government's policy in closing completely the space, even for the exercise of the right to uh, faith and to exercise of any type of uh, freedom in the country. And um, I, I don't want to make this exceptional, but I, what I'm trying to say is that it reached the level where even the church, the Catholic, cannot exercise anymore or cannot even express their view on issues. And I think this is not acceptable. And what we can do is that we need to reemphasize again that the country should open its border for the international scrutiny. It's not enough to continue to tell the international community that everything is perfect. While when we are seeing people leaving the country and coming outside. If everything is perfect, then let us go and see. Let us go and see how we help the country. Let us go and, go and, sort and monitor. Gracias por ver este video para seguir derrotando la censura en Nicaragua. Si deseas apoyar el periodismo independiente de Confidencial con una donación, puedes hacerlo a través de nuestro canal de YouTube. Lo único que tienes que hacer es ir al chat de nuestras transmisiones en vivo y dar clic en el botón Super Chat. Así podrás agregar tu comentario junto a un donativo. También puedes dar tu aporte en el video que más te guste haciendo clic en el botón de Super Thanks, ubicado en la barra inferior de todos nuestros videos. Con tu apoyo seguiremos investigando y contando la verdad para informar a nuestras audiencias.